and good morning everybody out there in TV land. Welcome to the Schooner Morning Show. I'm your host, Mark Prevo, and we are interviewing today our good friend, Norm St. Pierre. He is up in apartment 422, is that right? That's correct, sir. 422. So, Norm, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born, what you've done. Oh, I was born and raised in Maple Street in Lewiston. Maple Street in Lewiston? Yeah, diagonally across from the, the old Ritz Theater. Yes, yes. Back in 1934. Yeah. And, uh... And for our viewers, that is now where the public theater is. That's correct. Um, they yeah. transformed that into an absolutely beautiful public theater where, uh, where people can go and watch live performances of plays and things like that. Well, town has changed a lot in many ways and other ways and pretty yeah. much the same. Yeah. So did you go to school in the Lawston school system? Uh, yes, I went to St. Peter's and St. Paul's. Yeah. Parochial school. And then I went on to uh, St. Dominic's. I graduated in 1952. And uh, that's the days of the uh, Korean War. The Korean War, yeah. So my intent was to work into the financial banking field. Ah. But with career going on, uh, they did hire too many eighteen-year-olds. <laughs> <laughs> they had, they figured they had a, a future coming up. So basically, uh, I graduated in June, and the following February. Uh, well, what happened is that the, a couple of friends of the, of the uh, Three Musketeers, so to speak. Uh, we just uh, picked up the jobs we could have. So we decided, well, not much future here. So we went down the Ash Street and enlisted in the U.S. Air Force. Oh, the Air Force. Yeah. We, yeah. Uh, we enlisted around November and they said, well, we can get you out of here before Christmas. We said, we'd like to stick around for Christmas and then go. Yeah. So February 5th, Bob, JP, and myself took off and the Fort Williams took our physical and we joined the Air Force. Wow, that's great. So after basic training, uh, we all split up. I think Bob went into uh, the supply side and JP went into uh, radar school. Yeah. And then I went down to uh, Mississippi, Gulfport, Mississippi, Kiesler Air Force Base, and went to radio school. Now, are these other two gentlemen best friends or brothers or? Uh, Bob is a uh, neighborhood best friend. Yeah. He's still friends. Yeah. He's retired in Tennessee. Yeah. And JP went on to, uh, uh, I believe he became a very, uh, uh, Went up the, the train, he, I think he became a manager. Yeah. yeah. I know he spent 10 years in Montreal being a manager for the Prudential of America up there. So that's why you called them the Three Musketeers, because yes. you guys were well, all we, best we friends were growing best up. Best friends. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, Bob went on to move to Connecticut and New Jersey and went on. He worked for some uh, company. I guess he just went up the ranks. He he did well for himself. And he, then he finally retired after so many years, and he ended up in uh, retiring in Crossville, Tennessee, the yeah. town of Sergeant York. Yeah. How about you? What did you do after after radio the school? Career? You went to radio school? Yes. Yeah. I went to radio school. Came home. And this is where I met Pat. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah. Uh, that was um, Pat's his wife, by the way. <laughs> yes. Uh, Sixty-three years. Sixty-three in years in college. So, anyways, we uh, I ended up uh, going to uh, 
Anchorage, Alaska, Elmendorf Air Force Base. Wow. For two years. Yeah. And when we got there, they said never to volunteer. And when we got there, they said, well, we need eight radio operators down in Lotion Islands. And they said, uh, well, if you volunteer, instead of rotating in two years, you can rotate in one year. So my hand went right up. Yeah. Because I had met Pat on a blind date. Yeah. And in any event, uh, I went up, I should say, went down to the Aleutian Islands. Right. A little island called ADAC was a Navy base. It was a Air Force detachment there, and we did the uh, radio work, uh, air to ground, and uh, cocoa whiskey, which was cold, and uh, um, also uh, we had the uh, air to ground voice. And the radio station uh, was in King Salmon, was run by the FAA, well, CAA at the time. And I got to talk to a guy named uh, Vic Muller, and he told me about the CAA. So I came back in the Air Force in uh, 57, got out, and Shortly thereafter, the, again, the jobs were scarce. Yeah. So I finally, about a year, uh, I applied for the CAA, and I became an air traffic controller. No kidding. Yeah. And yeah. so where did that take you? What what career path did that take you on? Well, Your air traffic control whereabouts? Well, uh, Pat and I got married May 4th, 19. Uh, 57. Yeah. And then uh, I went to school. I, I joined the FAA in yeah. 1958, September. Yeah. And uh, we, after school, uh, I met a guy there. Well, there were six of us in that class, and uh, I forget his name now. Uh, his wife, aunt, lived in Salem, Mass. And she said that there's an apartment available because when I was in school, Pat was looking for an apartment. Yeah. So she took a, a bus down to Salem and we rented an apartment in Salem, Mass. It's, that's a story in itself. Yeah. And uh, when we come back, come to find out that the, her mother who was a Ford, her mother was a Terrio, and the co-owner of that building where we had the apartment was a Terrio. It turned out to be first cousin. You're kidding me. <laughs> they turned out to be first cousins. First cousins. No idea. No idea. Until that happened. How that happened. Yeah. How that happened. Yeah. So we stayed there for seven years, and during the Cuban crisis, Kennedy, President Kennedy, uh, they made a decision to move all the air traffic control centers, not the approach control, but the centers out of the uh, metropolitan area. So yeah. we ended up, at, I worked at the Boston Air Route Tra Traffic Control Center. Yeah. And they moved the center to Nashua. There was three sites being, uh, I think it was one site west of uh, Bedford, uh, considering and then one site in Nashua, and the other site they considered was Sanford, Maine. Oh! Well, I was praying for Sanford, Maine. Right, right. However, Style Bridges was the senator New Hampshire. He's influential, so we ended up in Nashua. Yeah. Which turned out to be a good good move. So we spent 35 years in Nashua. Wow, that's fantastic. I don't think people realize that an air traffic controller doesn't necessarily sit in that tower that's at right. every airport. That's right. There's a whole center there that's doing that's everything right. by radar. And right. Well, yeah. well, we didn't have radar then. No? No. <laughs> I don't want to go there. Okay, yeah, we don't have to go down that road. <laughs> so anyways, we, we lived in Nashville for 35 years, and I was in air traffic control for 11 years, and unfortunately I ended up with an ear infection. and red. So finally I... I transferred over to uh, uh, what they call, uh, the, when they converted the manual 
system over to radar. Yeah. We ended up into, uh, I, I, I applied for a job into what they call data systems. Yeah. And we maintained the computer system. Yeah. And my job was basically what they call adaptation. And this was uh, uh, putting to the control of the computers uh, all the, the information where like uh, Auburn Airport is, yes. the latitude, longitude, right, right, uh, navigational aids, the, the radar, which we introduced later on. Yeah. So basically, I ended up in a data system in 1969, and in 1986, the FAA wanted a uh, thousand air traffic controllers. In Congress, uh, we don't have the money. So what they did, they borrow money from Peter to pay Paul. Yeah. Basically, they privatized the data system. So yeah. I, I got an early out, uh, uh, age 52. I could have retired at 55, but anyways, I went to work for a subcontractor to IBM. Yeah. So I did that for 1986 to 1992 as a subcontractor. And nice. In 92, I went over to the primary, which was IBM. Yeah. And the last seven years of, of my career were the, the best. I had a boss, uh, Kathy Riley. She was from Boston, through Bostonians. Yeah. Celtics, Red Sox, you know, sure, it. sure, true blue. Love the sports teams in New yeah. England, yeah. So uh, I ended up working for, well, IBM sold to Laurel, Laurel sold to Lockheed Martin. So 1999, I hung up my spikes, so to speak. Yeah, yeah, but what an illustrious career! Yeah. Boy, you really kept busy. Well, I did. Now, did you and Pat have any children? Uh, we. I know, that's another story. That's another story? <laughs> so, no, we, we have two, two children. We have Raina, she's yeah. uh, 53. Yeah. Uh, she lives with her husband in Nashville. They have, yeah. well, Raina had the two children with her first husband. And uh, Leah, who, she came to visit us about yeah. a couple months ago. Yeah. Uh, she's in the army. Well, she her husband's in the army. She's yeah. a helicopter pilot, Black Hawk. Yeah. And her son Joe, ten years younger, he's in Fort Drum, and he fixes Black Hawk. Oh boy, so, that's something. So we have an army. Uh, yeah. Army. Now where do they live? Well, uh, Leah is now in Waltham, Mass. Her husband Daniel. Yeah. Is attending Northeast. Northeastern University. Yeah. And uh, compliments of the Army to get his uh, master's degrees in electrical engineering. Excellent. Boy, that's and great. Joe Very successful. Joined the Army June 4th, not a year ago. Not this past June 4th, the one before. On June 4th, which happened to be my father's birthday. Yeah. And uh, a lot of coincidences. He's, he's now over at Fort Drum. Yeah. And uh, he's uh, working tools to be a crew chief on a Black Hawk. Sure. So, That's excellent. And so, then we have Andy. Uh, Andy is 50 years old. He's a uh, uh, high function autistic. Yeah. And he lives in his own apartment and he's doing very well. Yeah. He'd make a great Santa Claus. He loves to cook. Oh, no kidding. That's <laughs> great. He's got a crop of hair, not like me. Yeah, yeah. Beautiful, wavy hair. Yeah. And he weighs about 275. <laughs> oh, he would make a good Santa Claus <laughs> then. <laughs> so. <laughs> so, Norm, tell us as we close up here, do you have any interests or what are your passions or interests that you'd want some of your friends and neighbors here at Schooner Estates to tell them? Well, and know about you. Well, when I came out of high school, <laughs> my my dream was to become a professional baseball player. No kidding. Me. Good for you. Yeah. And then, uh, I played a little ball. Uh, I, this is when the reality came in. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, I played for the Donaldson Air Force Base 
may have stayed not too long, maybe four or five weeks before I got transferred, just as well transferred. He <laughs> gave me a gracious way to get out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So anyways, uh, my last official game was with, uh, uh, we went down to Fort McPherson and we played uh, a game down there. And lo and behold, Billy O'Dell was pitching, who went on to pitch at Baltimore, and they had Frank Bowling, a shortstop, who went on to play with the Braves. Wow. And this is when I find out there's a big difference between being good at Sandlot baseball yeah. and professional ball. I mean, even then, compared to the guys that are playing today, today yeah. the, the, it's fantastic. Just amazing today, yeah. I think all of us in high school dream of playing professional sports. I know I want to be a professional hockey player, but, you know, reality sets in at some point as the competition grows, you realize you're not as good as you think you are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, other than that, it's... Uh, my, my, my passion to speak of was uh, twofold. Personally, I enjoyed golfing. Yeah? And Wonderful pastime. I, yeah. I didn't mind chasing a little white ball. Right, you know? right. Takes your mind off everything oh, else. Right. It, I could get lost. In yeah, that. yeah. That's four or five hours. And the other passion was shared with my wife was uh, we both love family life. Yeah. And fortunately, both sides of the family always got along real good. That's excellent. Her brother lives right here in Auburn. Yeah. Off of my, my sister lives in Green. Yeah. Perfect. And I had uh, four sisters, living sisters, uh, down to two, and she had three brothers and a sister, and she lost two brothers, so they're down to two. Yeah. But whenever the families got together, it was just a joy. And the other passion was, well, Pat was always very bubbling personality. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we, we loved dancing. Oh. All dancing. Wonderful. And in 65, we took up Western Styles square dancing. Yeah. And then uh, we did that, and that was our salvation. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That, that was our social life. We met some wonderful, wonderful people through square dancing, and in 2005, we had bought a place in Florida in 2002 to spend the winters, but her mom got sick, and yeah. uh, Pat Stayed and I moved in with her, and uh, yeah. Pat's a good caretaker, so uh, we took care of her until she you know, passed away in 2003. And then we started going down in 2005 for the winters. And yeah. I was looking at the local paper and there was a little, maybe an inch wide, two inches by three, square dance in South Venice. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, red baits calling. Well, red baits turned out to be a caller in uh, around uh, southern uh, Massachusetts. I think it was around the Springfield area. But yeah. Yes. He's still calling to this day. Isn't that something? He's 92 years old. Yeah. Says, well, we got to go. That is. Because Red Bates, that's got to be him. And it yep. was. And yep. every winter for 12 years, we went down and met our Florida friends. And we had couples from Nashua that moved down here, too. Yeah. Yeah. And they also belonged to the Richelieu Club, which is a French speaking service club. But yeah. I joined specifically to maintain my French. Anyways, those were good 12 years and then uh, in 2015 I had knee surgery and that didn't turn out too well. But And then this is when past started showing, you know, indication. Yeah. Of, yeah. So we came back and uh, when I go back to the my career in the FAA, I spent about 40 years in, in the business. Yeah. Retiring from Lockheed, and I was the best seven years of my life. Yeah. I yep. travel, I would, with Jack of all trades, he needed sure. the one to, I'd go to Long Island. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, 
Well, that sounds great, sir, and I, I, we're running out of time. I just want to thank you very much. Our guest today has been Norm St. Pierre right here in 422. Uh, stop and say hello sometime. And tune in every Tuesday and Thursday mornings as we interview different residents. Your turn is coming right up. Have a great day, and thank you, Norm, very much. My pleasure, Norm. Very illustrious career and a, a great life. Yes, it has been with Pat. Excellent, excellent. We enjoyed it. We, 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 she is great. Great. And, uh, well, unfortunately, we expected this, but I didn't expect it this quickly. And I spent as much time as I can. She still has cognitive uh, signs. She'll mostly meet me and say, I said, I've been looking for you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And Pat, his wife, is living next door at uh, Schooner Memory Care. Well, again, I thank you, Mr. St. Pierre. All of you folks out there, have a wonderful day.